Nice. All right, welcome to this week's Concurrency Beer 30. I'm Eith Lesnowski, Concurrency Chief Technology Officer. And this week, I'm joined by Brian Bales. Brian is a Senior Systems Engineer with Concurrency, working a lot with Windows Virtual Desktop. Welcome, Brian. Thank you, Nate. Brian, what kind of beer are you drinking today? It is an Old Nation M43. It's a New England uh, IPA, hazy. It's very good, very tasty. Okay, cool. Are you, are you kind of an IPA person? Like uh, it depends, on the, depends on the season, but I, since things are warming up, I kind of gear towards the uh, IPA, yeah. Okay, nice. I'm, a, uh, I'm doing a Spotted Cow, which is my all-time favorite beer. Only can be bought in Wisconsin, so if you, if you like Spotted Cow, you have to come here to get it and come drink at our office and check it out. It is kind of like a farmhouse ale, like sort of easy drinking, sweet, like a little sweet. Um, it's just delicious. It's awesome. It's fantastic every time of year. It's also great with a fish fry. And this is a great time for fish fries. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, we are going to talk about a really interesting topic today, and that is Windows Virtual Desktop, or WVD for short, as we'll be calling it. And I would love to just start by asking you, Brian, why WVD in the first place? Why are people considering it? Why are they looking at it? What's the point of WVD? Well, uh, as you know, Nate, uh, the concept of a virtual desktop has been around for a long time. And I think um, in my journey, I've done several on-premise uh, implementations and they've had a lot of challenges. And as people start to migrate off of prem, you're gonna wanna move those workloads to the cloud and some of the value that it brings is you're no longer managing the underlying infrastructure. There was a lot of complexity um, and Microsoft's really just giving you a platform. You're getting out of that business and it leaves people like me to innovate on top of that and provide you know, value to the end user uh, in terms of getting access to their applications remotely. So what are the main use cases that they would look at? I've heard contingent worker, I've heard um, some of these, these shared use scenarios like in medical settings, you know, what are the main use cases that you've seen? Uh, definitely contingent worker or remote offshore workforce, rather than shipping them physical hardware, WVD enables you to get out of that business and also just provide people the applications that they need, no more, no less in a secure manner. Mm. Got it. Now, when you think about the move to use WVD, what what are the first scenarios that you've seen have really have really excelled, and what have been the challenges that you've seen in, in onboarding those first scenarios? Well, I think a lot of it has to do with it being a, a relatively new service, and it's it's constantly evolving. Uh, mm -hmm. Microsoft is clearly putting a lot of uh, innovation behind it. And just for a lot of people, I think it's just getting it started and trying to figure out how do I use this is kind of been the main main thing that we're seeing. Yeah, I feel like it it entered into understanding understanding that the market of virtual desktop is relatively mature, but not mature in the cloud. It feels like it entered into a very disruptive space in the market that even though it initially may not have every feature that every other platform has, it serves some really clear use cases that have been very successful, like the contingent worker or offshore that you've been you've been experiencing. Yes, I, I would agree with that. And I, I think that's always been Microsoft's philosophy, get it out the door with, you know, what a major, majority of people are gonna need and we'll improve upon it as we go. I mean, one of the, one of the things that that is very attractive that they brought to the table with this is the multi Windows 10 multi-session, mm -hmm. which allows you to stack users uh, vertically on, on the same Windows desktop and able to kind of save cost, which nobody on Prime had that capability. This is, it's unique to WVD and it should help people uh, save a lot of money on their Azure consumption. So how does a company go about managing a WVD environment? So in, in, in with WVD, you're really only responsible for your, your virtual images and maintaining those. You're not necessarily managing the underlying infrastructure anymore. Um, 
eventually they will be coming along with uh, integrations to the modern management tools like MEM. But uh, today it's really, you're managing the image and the applications and, and everything else is kind of taken care of for you. Would like, so like patching and things of that nature are already covered? Well, yes and no. Um, you're still gonna be responsible for patching. Uh, you can use some of the native tooling in Azure to do that. Uh, otherwise, it's a matter of getting the latest image from the marketplace in in Azure. That's already patched. And you know, there are other capabilities like Azure scale sets that can uh, help you mass deploy uh, your updated images after you patch them. Okay. So would you, when you're deploying new sets of WBD images at time of use or scaling up new environments, are you constantly refreshing from the marketplace to get the latest patches or are you deploying them and then you're accountable for patching using a set of tooling from the Azure environment that you're using for other things? Well, what you'd be patching would be your golden image and then you would deploy that out. It's all this, you know, it's you would duplicate it out with something like Azure scale sets. Got it. And and you could time that so that it doesn't disrupt your end users. You could say, okay, the 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 old image is the old image, this one's the new <laughs> one, and we'll roll out accordingly as people log off. Okay. What about other management scenarios like antivirus and anti-malware and defender and and understanding when compromises happened with conditional access within the context of the virtual device you know is that are there controls that you can deploy there from the your modern management ecosystem well i mean it's it's everything's going to be the same as if it's a physical device uh with within the old 0365 cloud so if, if you are running Defender ATP, it's the same. It's going to be the same security center. Um, in terms of that, yes. Okay, awesome. So when you think about a lot of the mo maybe modalities of using WVD, you know, if you are a full session or a, or publishing an application or a shared session, you know, can you walk through the different types of use cases and how it supports what it supports? Sure. I mean, the easiest is going to be your published application. That's really no different than in today's world, remote app. Uh, you're just giving people access to that application or a handful of applications and you get native integration to the Windows 10 environment so that it looks like a natively installed app. Uh, you could also publish those same remote apps to a full desktop in WVD. And then, you know, the, the shared environment is really really about your scale and, and stacking people up and getting getting the most out of what you're paying for in Azure. And, you know, it would everything's really driven by what applications, you know, each use case needs. Mm, got it, okay. You know, I was thinking about how you might combine the modern desktop experience with a WVD to serve legacy scenarios, you know, like if we're going down the modern desktop route and we have we have a user who's moved over to a guest network, they're Azure AD joined, they're Intune managed, they're, you know, fully over on the modern experience. Can WVD be used to give them access to applications which are more legacy oriented or does it have a different orientation and we might look to different solutions to serve that use case? In terms of legacy applications, Windows 7 is one of the spaces that Microsoft is um, allowing you to run that and get free security updates. Mm -hmm. So if you do have applications that are, are stuck behind, they, they run your business, putting them in WVD is something that people should definitely be looking at. And you can access them from anywhere as long as you have an internet connection and you know they're gonna be secure. It's definitely more secure <clears> than leave on physical devices on premise. And you can put conditional access on the front end of the access to WVD as well, can't you? Absolutely, things like uh, MFA, uh, SSO, um, even uh, password, passwordless sign-in, definitely it would all apply to WVD access. Okay. You know, when you look at management at scale, 
for a WVD environment. I know that you can do a fair amount of automation, just like you can automate other things in the Azure environment. You can automate the deployment of WVD environments. You know, can you talk a little bit about what you've seen there so far and what's what's been successful? Well, you know, again, Microsoft is, you know, it's kind of that concept of they get some basic things out there and they're going to definitely improve on them. Uh, what I'm seeing is they have some integrations with Azure Automation that help you, again, co control cost of this environment by being able to power power your desktops down at a certain time and turning them back on, uh, things of that nature to help you kind of keep the meter your consumption meter down. Um, I what I, I suspect there will be more advanced things coming, but as of right now, it's kind of basic. But I think it's going to work for a lot of people. You know, you think from a scale standpoint, this would be a huge opportunity for cost savings, just because like for some of these places we've seen Citrix and other environments, and it's like they've got to have these huge farms that run this stuff, and they're paying for it all the time. You know, we can kind of scale it up as we need at one point or scale it down. And then when we enter into situations like we're in right now with the big work from home push, you know, we can they can go and handle that kind of acceleration. Seems like a, a great opportunity in this particular use case to offset where people are moving out of having their own infrastructure. Absolutely, Nate. I mean, with Azure, you basically have limited limitless scale. And when you look at the on-prem world, you're limited to how much storage you can buy, how much compute, how much memory. And I think in times like right now, people are running out. And it's mm -hmm. it's not it's not like you're gonna be able to add it very quickly. So I think people should definitely be looking at the solution from a from a scalability standpoint. Got it, got it. Um what is the best way to distribute WVD access to individual sort of customers or users. Is there a, a way to say, here's how, here's where, here's where you're accessing, here's how I push out apps to you, or here's how I is. Are you that in conjunction with the modern management tooling if they have a desktop, or like how do I go about doing that? Uh, there's a client that gets installed uh, on the endpoint, and it's just going to connect you directly to your WVD environment and you'll get the normal Azure sign on that you're used to seeing. Um, and there's, there's clients for all the modern OSs and you can even access um, it from a modern browser. So like your edge your Chrome mm -hmm. direct browser, uh, HTML5. Awesome. So Brian, what about scenarios where there's a thin client? You know, a medical scenario where they've got these hospital trolley things they push around and they have a thin client on it and they need to remote in or uh, or maybe a manufacturing environment where they're putting these thin clients out there and they want to make sure that there's uh, that same kind of access. I mean, this is, does WVD support thin clients at this point? Is it something that's coming? Uh, I believe it's going to be coming. I know at Ignite this, this past fall, they announced a partnership with a company called iGel, who's pretty big in the thin client space, especially in manufacturing. And they gave they gave some pretty exa uh, pretty good examples of some significant cost savings they were able to do um, for their frontline workers by deploying thin clients with WVD uh, versus um, standard hardware that they had been using in the past. And if I, re if I recall correctly, they gave a number of like, uh, their cost was nine dollars per worker per month to give mm -hmm. them a full, a full win access to their Windows application. So it's pretty attractive, especially in manufacturing where you know costs are usually pretty tight. That's pretty incredible. Yes, absolutely. How does WVD work in scenarios where you require, you know, high fidelity audio, video, things like that? Is that something that they're that's they're working on? Is that something that's a little complicated right now? Like, what's your take on that? So that's the beauty of Azure. Any any virtual any virtual uh, server SKU that you can get in Azure, you can apply to WVD. So if you if you need something with high end graphics, it's actually it's absolutely there. You would just deploy that as part of your session host pool. Now, obviously, you're going to have to pay for it, but they do have uh, NVIDIA and ATI powered uh, high end graphics available. Awesome! Wow, that's that's pretty cool. Absolutely. Uh, you know, in my past, we I actually we did have to do that on prem, and it's very, very expensive because you have to get uh, video cards for your blades, and very, very challenging. And I 
it's pretty much turnkey with Azure. Thing of beauty. Wow, wow. So, Brian, what's coming next for WBD? You know, when you think about all the features they've already released, you know, what are the things that are coming down the road that we can disclose? You know, nothing from the private space, but, you know, things that you're aware of that's coming down the pipe. I, from what I know, they're mainly focused on um, getting getting some of the management tools into a GUI. Uh, with the initial launch, a lot of things, you know, were PowerShell only, which may scare some folks. So I think that you know they're putting their emphasis on getting getting that uh, story together and and make it more holistic and easier to consume. I'm actually really glad they started with automation first because I feel like that really enables the most mature use cases where you're tying into other platforms. Absolutely, Nate. And that's that's been their mantra, I think, across the board is focus on the REST APIs, focus on PowerShell. We'll do the GUI stuff later because you're right. That's, uh, you know, more value add is getting things automated. We don't want to do things manual through a GUI anymore. Awesome. So, Brian, last question. Um, you have spent a lot of time doing kind of a diverse set of skills, modern management, uh, end user computing, and now WVD. You know, what makes you really enjoy doing that kind of work and understanding the relationship between those those areas? Well, I right now I'm super excited just with the, the transformation to modern. There, there's just so many new things coming at you. Uh, so much more security that we can apply to the endpoints. It's it's just a very fast moving uh, area, and I, I I can't be more excited about it. This is it's a great time for people that do this kind of work, and we should be very excited. We have new innovation platforms, and we can I can only guess what the future is going to hold. Awesome, man. Cool. Well, I'll give you a virtual cheers. And Thank I hope you, Nate. Well, that you have a great, great weekend. And uh, thanks for spending some time on Concurrency Beer 30 talking about WVD.